Hi everybody, I'm Tara. I'm Christopher. I'm Elijah. From Crooked Row, and today we are going to harvest our corn. Now, we did not plant our corn all at once, so some of our corn's a little bit overripe, but that's okay. If you have overripe corn, or even immature corn, uh, there are many things to do with un overripe and underripe corn. Um, and so we can go over that in subsequent videos, but today is all about the harvest. So we're gonna go get to harvesting. Woo -woo. <laughs> Let's go. Here is our very weedy corn rows. Uh, we're just gonna go in and these are definitely ready to be harvested. Just break them off. You could use clippers, but that's not nearly as fun. What is that? That's not milkweed, but look at those prickly things on it. Kind of cool. Yeah, what is that? It's a dragon fruit. YouTubers, if you know what that is, leave it in the comments below. That is an interesting weed. Another armful, huh? Mm hmm Let's get this in the wheelbarrow. Yeah. Okay, so here is our very first picking. Uh, that's almost a complete wheelbarrow full and there's definitely a whole bunch more to pick later. So uh, for four, I think, what was it, Christopher? Ford seed packets? Uh -huh. That is not bad right there. Not at all. Okay, so here is our table full of yellow ears. If you notice in the back, we have a bowl full of white. Those are gonna be immature because this is yellow corn. So that's gonna be immature and we're gonna use that bowl um, for creamed corn and um, probably from our second batch. We'll, we might freeze it, I don't know, we'll decide later. But for right now, we're gonna prepare some of the really good ears to um, blanch and get into the freezer. So um, the wheelbarrow over there where Sayla is, we're gonna give all of that to our dairy cows, peaches and cream. That is a great treat for them. But now let's head to the kitchen so that we can blanch our corn. So we have our water on to boil and we're going to put our um, cobs in here for about five minutes and then we'll take them off. Woo. It's getting steamy and we will cool them at the sink over here. We are just filling this sink and the sink next to it full of cold water. And so when I pull it out to be blanched, we'll put it in this sink first. After blanching, we're just going to put them into this. It's full of cold water. And then we're going to also fill the other side with cold water. This side will stop the cooking. Um, and But the water will start to heat up just from the residual heat of the corn. So that's why we're going to fill up the second sink uh, with cold water as well to make sure that it's completely cold before we bag it and put it into the freezer. So we're just going to go ahead and get started with that. So in they go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do one more since we have six in our family. <clears throat> We're gonna blanch those for five minutes. And I just wanted to say really quickly, um, there are people who don't blanch theirs. And um, the, the reason why you want to is because it does lock in, it stays fresher longer. 
Um, if you don't blanch them, they'll stay fresh for about six months. If you blanch them, they stay fresh for about 12 months. And it does kind of lock in the sweetness, um, but it also kills a bacteria that's on them. And I, I mean, I, I know that there's different schools of thought on this, but I kind of feel like freezing wood too, but I could be wrong. So I want it to last as long as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and blanch them for five minutes. So once we do this, we'll throw them in the cold water get them cool and put them in Ziploc baggies and when we get to that point then we'll come back and show you what we do with those to get the air out. Okay that five minutes is up and now we're just going to put them all right here in the sink. Okay this has been in for a couple of minutes and it's pretty cooled off so I'm going to go ahead and put it over here in the second one because in just a couple minutes, we're gonna have another batch come out of the boiling water. And so it is now going into its second cooling. And then I'm gonna put it over here on this drying rack. You don't have to have this. You can put yours on a towel. Okay, so these are cooled and dried. These are actually pretty cold and they are dried on my tray. There's about 12 in this gallon Ziploc, which is perfect for us because we have six people. Um, so you want to get as much air out as you possibly can and how you do this is with a straw who was the ingenious person who thought of this I don't know but I'm very thankful so okay so I've got my Ziploc closed and this is actually sort of difficult to get the air out of here because of all the you know bumpiness of the corn but so this is ideal and it might take you a few puffs <laughs> to get it all out but it's definitely worth getting the air out it'll, it'll keep your corn longer so I just <laughs> it doesn't look very pretty but it works do you see how much tighter that is and we'll just put this right in our deep freeze. If you don't have a deep freeze, you can put it in your regular freezer too, just depending on how much you're gonna use. So this is tried and true. It's super easy. I mean, the whole cob. We're also gonna cut some off and I'm gonna use it in a recipe video that's coming. So, but here you go, harvested corn. Wow, that, it is so hot out. It is, what is it, August? It's, we're at the end of August. August and, 20th. Yeah, it is so hot. Um, it's actually not so hot. Elijah, didn't you say it's like... It's 81. It's 81. <laughs> it's only 81, but it is so humid here. Like, I don't know if you can pick this up on the camera, but we're all soaked. Like, yeah. like you, can you see my arm glistening? <laughs> is your arm glistening, guys? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, we are so hot and sweaty. But we got one heck of a haul. I mean, an entire wheelbarrow full is great for our first go-round. I mean, there's still ears that are developing on there. So, uh, and these actually are nice size ears. Now this is not the big hybrid corn that's huge and like you eat it like this. But I mean, these are what? Eight inches long? Yep. About eight, eight inches long. We're all looking over at the wheelbarrow. Uh, it's about eight inches long. Um, I can tell you, we actually had some last night with our dinner. Um, if you haven't eaten grilled corn, please eat it's grilled really corn. Good. It is so good. I had never had it in my life, believe that or not. Elijah made it. He is, out of all the kids, he's he's definitely our chef. Uh, and he basted it with butter and threw it on our grill while we were doing burgers. It, I'm like, I've never been a huge corn eater, but wow, you could get really get addicted doing that. Mm. Um, we're gonna have some subsequent videos of us um, if you don't know what to do with corn, I mean, corn is so easy, you shuck it. If you're not going to utilize it or store it right away, keep it in its husks so that it stays nice and moist. But only do that for a couple days because corn is just like anything else. Like, like you don't want to keep storing it. It's going to convert all its sugars over into starch. So you still want that yummy sweetness when you bite into it, like we had last night. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> um, you can grill it, you can can it, you can cream it, and you can put it in lots of recipes, and we're gonna have lots of recipes. Um, 
I feel like there's enough canning and preserving videos out there, especially for corn. I mean, if you're interested, go ahead and put in the comments below if you want to see us preserve them and, and maybe, you know, subsequently we will. And remember, if we can grow corn, anybody, anybody can. can. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.